Hey, it's the Fort Worth Playboy. And my Playboy's Bunny. Welcome to our podcast where we discuss pickup, game, relationships. And sex, sex, sex. And today is a little bit off topic. It's more of a Twitter topic. Yeah. And we call it, I'm moving to the country. <laughs> moving to there's, the country. There's guys scattered all over the world. I'm going to make a lot of money. I've been working off my laptop in an apartment in, like, Columbia. <laughs> And I'm going to buy a bunch of land in rural America. I'm going to move out there. Homestead. And homestead. I'm going to I'm going to buy a couple buildings in town and just live there yeah. with my family of ten kids. Yeah. My little um, on the prairie wife. We're going to homeschool. Oh yeah. We're going to yeah. grow our own vegetables and and yeah. have cattle. Yeah, and I want all my bros to get land near me. And then we can just, like, rule the area. Live off the grid. Yeah. And so I'm going to give the bad news today. (laughs) This is your worst case scenario because I've lived in the country. I've lived in the suburbs. And I did 12 years, just like you would do 12 years in a prison. (laughs) In the country. And, And I've done nearly a decade as deep in the city as you can. Yeah. You know? In a walkable neighborhood on the fourth floor. And and I will say, I've also lived in all of these areas. I've lived in the heart of the city. I, I was raised in the city as well. Um, I have lived in suburbs, certainly. And I have lived in the deep country, rural areas where it takes you 15 minutes to get to the street so that you can get to the store in another 15 minutes. So... Yeah. I've had all, now, I will say, Fort Worth and I are kind of going to be balancing each other out a little bit in this conversation, because his his um, experiences weren't as positive as mine. No. So. Yeah. He's going to be a little bit, a little bit bitter here, and I'm going to try and soften the blow. I, yeah, I think I'll <laughs> give you the, not the worst, worst case, but the realistic case of what you'll probably oh experience. Oh, my gosh. So let's talk about, you know, the first thing people think, I need to get out of the city because there's so much crime. Right. And there's so much, you know, a threat of crime. And so we moved into our house that had been empty for about a year, you know, on, on two acres. And we moved in on a Friday we kind of get all of our shit out over the next two days, and I go to work on Monday. She goes to work. I come home Monday evening. I walk in and sit down on the couch, and I look, and I'm like, that's weird. The TV's gone. God. And then I started looking around, and I'm like, the microwave's gone. Oh, no. And all of our prescription medicine was gone. I mean, every, everything that was valuable could be sold or pawned or yeah. used. Yeah. Was gone. Shit. Because that's what they do in the country. <laughs> you don't have dogs yet. You don't have your security set up yet. And they know that. So when a new family moves in, they rob them in the first couple of days before they get their security set up. You know, because everybody else, once you're there, you have dogs. You, you have dogs whether you want dogs or not. Well, you know? I think I think the biggest factor is it's it's an easy target because you're out with not many neighbors, no, not many oh, people watching. Oh, there's no one nearby. Yeah, I no. mean, you can't back up to a house and look like you're essentially moving in when you're actually moving stuff out. Yeah. And you can't. I mean, you can literally back your truck up to a door and spend four hours. Yeah. That's, and no one's ever going to say a but word. But that's what I was saying yeah. was if you're in the city and have five neighbors, they're going to recognize that you're not the same... The, the robbers aren't the same people as the little, the cute little newlywed couple that was yeah. just moving yeah, their stuff not, in, yeah. you know, and introducing themselves to the neighborhood. So in the country, there's an isolation factor. So I'm literally, you're the only person I've ever heard of this happen to. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. But, you know. How old were you when you guys moved out there? How old was I? Yeah. Well, I've lived there. I've lived out in the country, deep in the country, when I was in the fourth grade through the eighth grade. And then we moved a little bit less rural, but still rural, 
less isolated, I should say, from ninth through twelfth grade. I would so say, I did a lot of years. Yeah, in, I would say one. This is, of course, you know, more recent, and things have probably changed. You know what I mean? I mean, there was actually a time when, like, running meth was more consistent. You know, out in the country. Yeah, and it's not anymore. So things change. But when we spoke with the police and with neighbors, they're like, it's an unfortunate, common occurrence. Yeah. But maybe it's also because you're still relatively close to the city. You're within an hour. You know, so there's always a trade-off. Um, let's talk about number two. Guys always think they're going to go out and meet the most sweet, feminine, religious Girls, yeah, they're, and Delicate. soft and feminine, and sweet. They're going to be in their little sundresses, hanging the laundry yeah. with their wind blowing in the hair and their hair blowing in the wind. And what do you really deal with when you're in the country? Well, girls in the country are tougher. They're just they're built differently. They're they they first of all nine and a half times out of ten. They're not allowed to get away with not having hard chores just because they're girls. They are still ex expected to help feed the animals. They're still expected to help bale hay. They're still expected to help take garbage out, mow the lawn, you know, because it's not, a, it's like a tractor. It's not a little push lawnmower, you know, burn trash. All of these, these kind of factors uh, you know, chase cattle when, you know, men fence. All these things that are not on suburbanite or city radar, girls have no choice but to be involved in because all hands are on deck when the, the fence got broken by these dumb animals and they've broken out and, and now you have to chase down, you know, your livestock down the road. I mean... All of this stuff matters. If, if you know, your hay field catches on fire because someone's careless with something, it all matters. Girls in the country don't have a choice but to be tougher and be able to roll with stuff like this. They're sturdier, but I think that there's such a misconception about girls in the country just being these delicate little... Um, Feminine, sweet, innocent, modest girls, and they can be, but more often than not, it's it's a lot hardier girl. Yes, she their hands are going to be rougher. Yeah, there's going to be more sun damage. There's going to be less maintenance that you get used to in the city. Yeah, you know, it's just not done. You know, there's no reason for her to do her nails every week. Yeah. Because they're going to get destroyed. It's, it's you know? you know, things like, you know, any more salon appointments, hair appointments are actually probably pretty dominant, predominant in rural areas because it's kind of the only thing girls have. But it's usually pretty severe, number one. It's not really, it's usually a lot kind of harder look. You know it when you see it. Yeah. Um, but... Like you're saying, yeah, especially the younger girls who are still very much like have, have all the chores and stuff like that, they're not going to bother getting their nails done all the time because it's, it's like for prom or for homecoming or for a special a date. Yeah. yeah, but other than that, why do all the beauty, beauty stuff because it's just going to get destroyed. 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 Yeah. Um, three, you're going to run the town. Because there's nothing but, you know, what, what do you say, bumpkins out there. Yeah. And the fact is that there's usually two or three families that have yeah. been running the city for generations. Generations. The whole area. And they know what it's worth, and they will be glad for you to overpay and then abandon ship. Right. You know, I mean, you'll never, it, it just never works out. People because think they, they're going to come come in and, and topple Boss Hog or, or just automatically become Boss Hog. Exactly. And they absolutely are not. No. And it, and it really comes down to even they won't sell. 
Yeah. You know, they'll say, well, are you sticking around? Who are you? We don't know you. Yeah. They do not sell to outsiders. You know, they'd rather sell their brother-in-law. Sure. You know, or never sell. Or never sell. Yeah. Most of them just don't. They just don't. They'd rather it set empty than to give it to an outsider. Well, the big families, yeah, the yeah. big families do not sell at all because they're even, not going to risk it being out of out of the family. And I even had a friend that bought from in the city that I was in or the town I was in, and he was an outsider, and it took three years longer than it should have to rehab a building. Yeah. Simply because you're waiting and waiting. Now, if they had been somebody's brother-in-law or sure. brother or, you know, the dad of whoever ran the the permit department. And it's just a different thing. And they're going to definitely milk you. Well, it's it's incestuous. And I'm, I don't actually mean that to mean incest. I right. mean, like, it's just an incestuous environment. Yeah. Everybody only wants to do business with who they know, who they who they feel they can trust, but who they're familiar with for generations. Their yeah. grandfathers went to school together, their dads were in college together, their their moms were pregnant at the same time. All of this stuff matters the more rural the area. And and some so few people because now people move yeah. so much. They don't even know this is going on. Right. You know, they're like, what? Oh, you know, because nobody says, hey, that's my brother-in-law. You know, or that's my brother driving that truck that's dropping off the cement. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, they use their own contractors. They don't, you know, a lot of it is keeping the money in the family and in the city. Yeah. They do a better job of it. Um, but you're not going to come out, and no matter how much you have, it ain't going to matter. Yeah. They you're not going to, you're not going to rule the, you're not going to unseat the families that have been there yeah. for generations. And will be there long after you're gone. They've been there. They'll be there long yeah. after you're, you've are you tucked tail and, and left. So that gives the ne- next point. You'll never be an insider. At least not in your lifetime. Yeah. I, I mean, this is where we differ a little bit. I feel like you can, you know, I feel like there are ways that if you want to move into the country, you have to truly fall at the mercy, I think, at of the region and say, I'm, we're here, my, our family is here, we're never leaving, we want to do everything that this, this area has to offer, we love everything about it, we love everyone, and just be kind of like a first date, be agreeable. You know, be involved. Social. Be social. You know, and it's still not an overnight thing because a lot of people jump in, you know, with both feet into a new area. But you have to show through lifetimes that you're there to stay. And I do think, you know, by the time you're having kids or your kids are having kids, that you are a part of the of the framework of the town you're still not going to be boss hog but you know you might get some work from them yeah i don't think i don't think that you have to remain an outsider in all fairness when you guys moved to the country your ex-wife is not that kind of person she no. didn't she you, she's not that social yeah no. and you were working in the city exactly. so you weren't that is another factor and we'll talk you know and let me give an example of like when I really realized like how how it really goes is like at homecoming. Yeah. You know, they introduce the homecoming couples. Perfect. And they'd be like, Bob, Bobby Jean, his family has been in such and such for five generations. Yeah. 1870, you know, and his his date is so and so and they have been in town since nineteen thirty. Yeah. You know, I mean that was part of the presentation. Exactly. How long has this child's family been a part of the community? It's you a know? big deal. It's a big deal. Um, so that's why I always say that you might, but my children have been born there. And I always think if, as long as you work in there, you know, a lot of that is dependent on you actually living and working there. Yeah. Because I would have to leave to work, you know, and come back. Um, I think that also, has, if you're in town all day, every day, 
you become more of part of the fabric of the city faster. Yeah. Well, and you're hobnobbing with them. You're visiting with them. You're doing business with them. You're doing life with them. Yeah. It matters. Yeah. So some of the things that we were at, if I did it over with the intention of getting ingrained into the community and knowing better, knowing what I know now. Right. Yeah. You have to work. One of you has to work in town. Exactly. That way they're, they know what's going on. Yeah. You know. I think that there are a lot of misconceptions about what it takes to, to move into the country and, and truly have a successful experience. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but I feel like with enough preparation and understanding that it's more, it's a much more long game kind of um, thing you have to actually plan and work towards, kind of like learning a new skill or I mean it truly is a generationally long game effort if you truly want to create roots yeah. in, a, in a in a more rural environment and, and I hate to say this I'm going to put this on the back end but it's very important if you're not white as snow yeah you're going to have a bad time it's true it's, it's just the way it is brown black Asian, they're just not welcome. No, you know, oftentimes all. that's true. Yeah, and, and in a hostile, and literally will not speak to you. So you're going to have an even more challenging time. Yeah. You know, because I've seen some brown guys talking about, it, and I'm like, that's not going to go well at all. Yeah. You know, so that's just one of those things that isn't mentioned, but it's a very like in rural. It might be to other places, but. Where we're at in Texas, right? What our experience? You were in Texas too. Uh huh. It's it's generally very white. Oh and yeah. You, and you don't realize it till you get there, and you're like, oh, and they take pride in that. Yeah. You know, so that's part of it too. It is. It is. Oh, I don't even know what I don't even know how to wrap that up. But I hope that this has been. If this key, if you keyed into this word, you know, moving to the rural life. We wanted to give you guys a accurate, on the ground view of it. Yeah, you won't find in a book. You won't find from people that have been living out there for. Because like we have, I I was talking to a guy that um, had done very well with his business, and he was like, you know, I launched this business. It just took off. He goes, I'd like to think that it doesn't have anything to do with my dad being the mayor, but I think it might. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure this town of 30,000 that your dad's the mayor of, it probably did help out a little bit, you know? That's so, funny. Yeah, so we want you to have, like, a realistic... And 30,000, that's huge in the in rural yeah. speak. Yeah, but, you know, who you know will go a long way. I lived in a town of 800. Yeah. I lived in a town of 2,200. Yeah. You know? And even these, I mean, then you start looking at, like, they usually coagulate. You know what I mean? They'll they'll have like little clusters. Oh towns, yeah! Count. Oh, there are definitely. Go, you go clusters. to a county high school. County. That's funny. Thankfully, I never had to do that. If you like this podcast, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. We'd love to hear your stories. Whether you have lived in the country, whether you very well, maybe you're a part of one of the families that that kind of runs the town, or you've attempted to live in the country and gone, oh. Yeah, this isn't exactly what I thought it would be. Whatever your story is, whatever your um, experience, we love to hear it. You know, even if it is different than ours or especially because. If you like this podcast, like, subscribe, share with your friends. We want you to win. Bye.